welcome to this lab module here today uh, we will be discussing something like uh, pvd like physical fiber deposition and we will be demonstrating the part so till now whatever we have learned is first we have shown do the governing procedure or what is the governing procedure what is the importance of governing procedure and introduction to the clean room then and we have a tool and then in the next module we have shown how the cleaning was performed so here we have shown piranha cleaning of a silicon wafer, 3 inch silicon wafer, but the same process can be done for the silicon wafer as well as for the glass wafers. In the next module, we have seen how we can spin coat polymide and how to make a polymide layer. So that much was like film preparation. After that, one of the main part of that fabrication came into picture that is lithography. So in our last module we have discussed what is lithography, how to do this and uh, different types of photo masks, different type of photoresist and uh, using positive photoresist how we did that uh, photolithography process that much was described in the last uh, till the last module. In this module as we have mentioned earlier we will see how to deposit titanium and platinum using electron beam evaporation technique and then we will go to go for a lift off to get the metal uh, patterning of the metal layer. So here whatever system you can see this is one electron beam evaporation system however this system has capability of doing e beam evaporation as well as thermal evaporation. In this module we will be discussing only uh, about the tool first, what are the different parts of the tool and what is importance of these parts and how to uh, and we will demonstrate electron beam evaporation technique and in some other module we will show how to uh, go for thermal evaporation technique and then in that module we will discuss what are the differences of, of the processes and then if time permits we will uh, show you another technique, another PVD technique that is sputtering. So we will show all these modules, I mean all these processes in subsequent modules but for today we will focus only on e-beam evaporation. So uh, this is the chamber of this tool. So in this chamber whenever we will open the chamber we will see that in front side there is electron beam uh, evaporation setup and the back side is a thermal evaporation setup. So if let us say when deposition is going on that time the chamber will be under vacuum. So we are not uh, allowed to open the chamber. At that time we can just open this viewport and see whatever is going on inside. Now tool is off and there is no uh, so, like light source inside like uh, when we do electron beam uh, evaporation or deposition that time uh, we have one filament that filament generates light so that time we can see what is going on inside or even in thermal evaporation uh, system that filament or the I mean due to joule sitting that will also generate some light so we can see what is going on inside but now tool is off so we cannot see but this is the viewport uh, just so that we can observe the things inside so here you can see there are two pipes coming so these are water pipes these are connected to the chiller so here one of these is to supply the cold water or the chilled water and the temperature will be a temperature will be around 19 to 21 degree c so when uh, and it will flow in the uh, inside as well as outside here you can we will show that later on so here inside outside everywhere the connection is there so it will be used as a coolant so whatever temperature or the heat generated inside will be dispersed and using the other one we will just main, maintain a flow of water so that we can cool down the tools inside as well as the chamber now next uh, let us see the other parts like inlets and outlets to the chamber. So this is the other side that we are talking about. So here are the pipes and here are the lines what you can see like for water cooling, cooling of the chiller. So here let us come to the inlet. So here the first one you can see this is air supply. So this is a connection from the compressor unit. So as you know that uh, most I mean few of the valves are pneumatic valves. So just to switch on or off or for the operation we need air supply. 
for some uh, particular pressure that we will be show, showing inside what is the condition. This is a vent valve. So, venting means putting air or inlating air in the chamber. So, here this is the vent valve you can see that just pipe is there and it is cut here. So, venting can be either in clean room environment or it is actually recommended to vent it using nitrogen. As we have uh, enough purity of air inside like purity in sense uh, less number of dust particles here inside. So, we are venting it in uh, clean room environment only otherwise it is recommended to use nitrogen cylinder. Here this is needle valve inlet. So, needle valve is used when you want any uh, other gas to be inside like maybe argon, maybe nitrogen or maybe oxygen for your deposition. So, if you want that type of environment in your chamber then you can use this and here you can see the cooling water in and out as we have already shown there outside the chamber this is the thing and here you can see that this is rotary pump exhaust. So, uh, it will be shown here that uh, there are two types of pumps uh, available. So, uh, in any deposition system the first one is uh, used for taking the pressure from atmospheric pressure to some 10 to the power minus 4 millibar pressure or 10 to minus 3 or minus 4 millibar pressure. So, rotary pump does that job and there is high vacuum pumps like it may be a diffusion pump or it may be turbo molecular pump those will be used for high vacuum reaching the high vacuum. So, this is rotary pump. So, usually when rotary pump works so that will have some exhaust uh, so that exhaust will be can be like uh, oil based exhaust or just the air out, outlet. So, this whatever the exhausts are there we are taking it out and keeping it outside the clean room or just throwing it outside clean room because that may contaminate our clean room environment. So, this is the things that are connected directly to the chamber. So, now we will focus the other units as well. So, after this you can see this. So, this is for liquid uh, pouring liquid nitrogen. So, let us say uh, this is the uh, chamber. So, this pumps will take some time to create vacuum in this chamber to make that process little faster or not uh, not only little faster, but also to hold at a hold a particular vacuum level in the chamber we can use liquid nitrogen. So, as you already know that liquid nitrogen is uh, having a temperature of minus I mean more than minus 150. So, that will help to get all the uh, molecules here at the same place so that it will be easier for the pump to for suction ok. So, here uh, we can just pour liquid nitrogen it will go inside you can see the port from here it will be inside there below this chamber and as chamber is open there whatever molecules are there that will go there and it will be stuck and suctioned eventually. So, now let us come to this front side we will just open this and see what is what are the components there inside that is uh, making this whole system work. So, here uh, before opening either you should make sure that uh, power is off or because here you can see already the things are written here that isolate main supply before removing this cover. This is connected to one of the safety interlocks. If this is on then your tool can only create vacuum, but it will not go to the process step or it cannot go to the deposition step that is because of your safety reasons and you can see here this is electrical hazard sign. So, now you know what you are expecting inside. If we open this so here you can see the first one this is a rotary pump that uh, we were talking about this rotary pump can create a vacuum up to 10 to the power minus 4 millibar range. So, usually at atmospheric pressure first this pump starts working or this pump starts creating vacuum and when the temp uh, when the pressure reaches 10 to the power minus 3 or uh, 10 to the power minus 3 millibar range that time thermomolecular pump took over the things. So, here 
from here if you see this is here how is the line is connected here and here the next thing we can show is the roughing valve so like that you have two valve here roughing valve and backing valve so these two are actually connecting the lines because here you can see so this is uh, this one is common to both the lines backing line as well as the roughing line when it creates vacuum directly in the, from the chamber it works as the roughing line and when uh, turbo molecular pump took over the things that time this acts as a backing valve so it helps turbo molecular pump by uh, creating a continuous pressure of minus 4 to the remaining area and this turbo molecular pump will uh, create vacuum in the chamber so as we have shown these two valves after that this one as you can see this is our turbo molecular pump so it can rotate up to 13000 rpm and it can drag the particles or the air in the chamber to this and uh, through the line there we cannot show it from here <laughs> through that line it will take the things out next after these valves we can see here the transformers these transformers are so at least this and this we can see one more transformer is there for the even so these two transformers we can see these are useful for thermal evaporation so this we will discuss in the later modules so now let us come to this side so here you can see so uh, as you remember that from outside we are showing one air, air supply uh, port there or one air supply line and that channel came through this and from here we can see how much pressure is there and how much pressure uh, will act on the pneumatic valves here because that is one of the main thing that will decide whether the valves will open or close or will operate or not so before starting the tool if you are not sure you can just check here whether you have the pressure or if somehow the process fails or uh, if somehow the pump doesn't start working you can just come and check whether this is on and water cooling system is also there inside and here uh, this other shutter things like uh, whatever shutter and all we will show it inside so those controllers are also inside and back side there are water supplies so here uh, back side as you can see as focus there so those are the supplies for di water this di water will come through the chiller so that it can maintain a particular uh, and preset temperature always for uh, cooling the th uh, cooling the chamber as well as the electron beam gun so we have seen what are all things we could show through this from this uh, distance and now we will come to this part this is another transformer so this transformer is used to generate electron beam so when only when we use this tool for electron beam uh, like generating electron beam for heating that time we just switch it on like just on and we have one more supply that we will show later while uh, i mean during the process we will show that so here you have to on and you can see here interlock and fan these two are very important here because as long as all the interlocks are not met your system or this uh, transformer output will not come because this is 5 kilo uh, 5 kilovolt system or 5 kilo uh, output is 5 kilovolt of this transformer so it can give you a uh, one electrical shock hazard so as this is very hazardous this is you cannot even take it out without opening the other parts not like that and the fan is required to cool down the area so this is basic of this now after this as we will switch on the tool in some time and as we are done with that part so we will close that door first so that the safety interlock will not be affected then we will move to the other parts now we will close the door and here you can see uh, one interlock so this one when this will be closed it will press this and that will work as one of the interlocks to make sure that the door is closed and now the user is safe and this uh, tool can go to the process step so we'll close it now and 
lock. So after that part, we will come to the controller part. So these are the units that will be controlled by this much of area basically and this is the display. So let us start from the top. This is the display where the system status will be shown and we'll, we can, uh, so this is basically touchpad based system. So this touchpad based display. So here we can select what are all operations we want this tool to perform. Uh, after this display, let us come to this part. So here, this is, uh, you can see here, one zero. This is basically on off. So this is a press switch. Like you can press it, it will be on. If you press it again, it will be off. So this is, this corresponds to main supply or the electrical supply of this tool. Here is the reset. So by any chance, if you switch off the tool in hurry, or if you press this emergency stop button by something, by some, because of some emergency, or if it is not on properly, there is some trip, some electrical issue, then there will be an hardware reset option. You can just reset it and then start the tool. And here if you see the next, these three are the indicators. These are not press switches, you can see here, you cannot press it. Basically these are indicators. The first one as you can see, this is safety interlock. So safety interlock means uh, whether we, uh, whether the tool is safe for the user to go for the high, uh, high power operations. So like as we have shown already that there is a 5 kilo volt transformer. So we cannot directly switch it on without covering the area or we, uh, without ensuring that we will not be in touch to the, uh, to the transformer. So like that as we have shown one door here, front door, we have opened and showed you the things. So like that. Uh, we have three doors to access the different areas. So all these three doors are connected to the same safety interlock. And with that, the vacuum created in the chamber that is also connected to the safety interlock. We should ensure that at least some amount of vacuum is there before starting the process. So all these things will be part of safety interlock that we, uh, when we will operate the tool, we will show the things again like how vacuum affects it, how uh, these opening doors will affect, all these things we will show. Though it is not recommended to uh, open, leave the doors open and run the tool because that will be electrical hazard for you. And here you can see this, the second one is the water cooling, uh, water cooling will be shown here whether water cooling is on or not, this is that indication. So here as already discussed that uh, chiller is required for cooling the gun as well as the chamber. So whether that chiller supply is on or not first and second whether the pressure created by the water or the water flow basically whether the water flow is enough or not that will be indicated by this. If it glows that means it is uh, we are good to go or if it does not glow then you have to go back and check whether chiller unit is on or not first or two somehow uh, like uh, water amount of water in the chiller unit is enough or not or the third one whether it is creating that pressure or not these three things you have to check if this does not glow and the third one is source enabled as we are not using this tool in automated mode so uh, there are different types of tools as you already know. Uh, so the tool can be completely manual, can be automated and can be semi-automated type. This is a semi-automated type tool. E uh, I mean, if you see any automated tool, then their source enable part will be there. So whenever deposition will go on, it will show. But in our case, we will just check this and this before starting the st uh, starting deposition. And here these two will press, these are the buttons that we will press before starting the tools. And here one of the most important feature of any of the tools that is emergency stop. So emergency stop button means you can just press it and when it is done you can just rotate it. If you rotate it will come up, if you press it it will be off, uh, it will off all the tools, all the valves and the parts. So here why I am telling this is very important because if there is an emergency situation like maybe uh, for the tool, 
मे बी सडन पावर कट और और मे बी देर इज सम फायर और सम अदर हैजर्ट कम्स सो एंड मे बी फॉर सम केमिकल हैजर्ट यू हैव टू लीव द टूल केमिकल हैजर्ट इम्पोज बाय सम वन एल्स और हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ सम अदर टूल बट यू हैव टू लीव द प्लेस immediately then you can just press the emergency stop and leave so that is utility of this so after this we will come to the next part the controller parts so this whole thing this complete part that is basically the controllers associated to e beam evaporator or e beam evaporation technique here the first one you can see this is source uh, source control in source control so what are all you are expecting so basically the first will be how much voltage you are uh, supplying how much current you are supplying and how much current you are supplying that should be controlled and there are other parameters to check whether these are on or not these are the indicators here let us discuss this thing first so here this is the on off button which corresponds to only this much area so when your transformer is on that time like e beam transformer is on that 5 kilo volt uh, transformer that we have shown then you can just press it this will be uh, this is press button after that you have, you can wait for some time start the gun this is this gun corresponds to the electron beam gun when the gun is on after that you will uh, you can increase the current from here or decrease the current so basically you can control your current with this and that indicator this uh, will show this display will show when, uh, what is your current level at that time the value you can check from here and this indicator the first one this power this vacuum uh, will show you uh, this power will show whether power is on or not this vacuum will show whether enough vacuum is created in the chamber third one water will show you whether water supply is there or not for cooling the uh gun then the rotary drive whether it is on or not then whether the gun is on so this part will come only when you switch on this gun and here local and remote so local corresponds to whether the deposition is happening in uh, manual mode and remote will show whether the deposition is happening in automated mode so as our tool is capable of um only of manual mode deposition so this local will be glowing so these things we will just uh, show during deposition as well so here these are the other indicators that will show whether your tool is doing fine or not with this hv adjustment you can actually adjust where the beam will fall you can change it through that and it is once it is fixed or finalized it is recommended not to touch that and shift the beam so little bit beam steering can be done with this so now let us come to the second part so in the second part you can see this is specially sweep control sweep control means whatever beam we are generating so we are now we will control the beam so the beam may have maybe like a point or maybe any of these wave forms like sine wave triangular wave square wave and it will have two components like y component and x component so that we can see here that x component controller is this part y component controller is this part so let's say this this is x direction and this is y direction both will, both can be controlled by these two controllers here as you can see both frequency we have uh, set it at 29 hertz and here there is some offset like the hv adjustment this also once it is set offset need not to be changed for all the depositions only what we are supposed to change is we uh, if we want it as a point source then you can give it as zero so that this part will be off and it will generate a point source or point beam from the source and it will fall on the crucible and now if you keep it as one so now this panel will be on and then you can select along y axis and along uh, x axis and along y axis whether you want the waveform to be sine or triangular or square that you have to decide and here these two will uh, be used to uh, define the amplitude if you increase the amplitude then it will take more area let's say 
if you uh, increase the amplitude it will take more area if you decrease the amplitude then it will take lesser area on the crucible that can be controlled by these two here as uh, in closer shot you can probably see that for platinum for dynamic, like uh, for different materials we have already noted the things but that optimization that you can do for i mean that is tool specific and you can do it for your tool as well <coughs> usually we deposit always uh, at the sign mode so like uh, sinusoidal type so along x axis it will be like this sign and along y axis also it will be like this so that will generate our whole i mean in i mean uh, superposition of these two will generate the beam here now coming to the third part when we'll open the tool that time we'll show again that uh, we have four crucibles there we will show that and what are all mater uh, materials are loaded that we will be discussing so uh, before that we can just show that four are there and this is the turret controller where you can switch on this controller and you can change uh, whichever crucible you want to select and how fast that crucible change will happen that you can uh, select from this so we always prefer to be uh, prefer to change the crucible at its maximum speed possible and here as you can see like uh, these are the indicators that you will see which crucible is selected so we will come to the storage controller part later now come to uh, let us go to one of the another important part that is DTM in this DTM we can mainly see two things here two uh, displays here one is about the rate another one is about the thickness and here these are the parameters that defines one material for the QCM or the quartz crystal monitor. The quartz crystal monitor is inside that we will uh, show once uh, we open the chamber and here actually we can uh, uh, input properties of the materials so we can select a film number and correspond to that film number we can actually uh, give the inputs as number basically like tooling factor then density then SEI or tooling factor again the tooling factor correction like that uh, so with this we can just define one material for this particular DTM so whenever we will go to that film number let us say film number corresponds to uh, titanium or film one corresponds to platinum so let us say when we will deposit platinum as all these values are already there so we will just select film 1 and we will get that uh, stored values there and from that we can uh, from that the, whatever material will be deposited on the QCM or quartz crystal monitor we can get a rate a rate of deposition and thickness means total how much thickness has been deposited these two will get and this is the controller like start stop and test like that for refreshing or for starting the thing and increase and decrease these two are useful to uh, write or to give the input about film number and about these things so this is what uh, this is how we are using this dtm or digital thickness monitor so after dtm this is the next panel so here this corresponds to mainly current levels then DTM on or off DTM power supply then shutters so let us come one by one so here this uh, LT secondary current HT primary current and this uh, control like this current controllers these things will be discussed on the next day because this corresponds more to thermal evaporation so leave this part for this module let us focus on this part so here as you see uh, if we switch it on then this is basically DTM will be on if tool is on and here this is e-beam shutter so electron beam gun shutter is here so on crucible on shutter is there and it will be there as long as material is not completely ready for the deposition so it will melt and it will uh, start I mean we have optimized the recipe so as per the recipe it will start at some point it will be like it will be ready for deposition in a steady rate so till that time we have to wait so after that we can just open the shutter here again two things are there like local and remote so remote corresponds to automated thing that we don't have 
that option here available now we have to put it for local and do it by ourselves like opening it or closing it ourselves in manual mode so this uh, this is kind of I mean controller of the shutter part here this is rotary drive controller so if rotary drive is there so if we want to deposit material in st uh, static mode then we can just keep it off if we switch it on then in, uh, rotation mode will be on and after this rotation mode is on that whole chuck that will be showing that chuck the the whole chuck will be rotating so if we uh, there are differences uh, that we will be discussing but this uh, this is for rotation and here rotation controller so this will change the speed here for this tool we uh, fix it at one point and we optimized all the recipes so we do not prefer to change this or change this rpm we just uh, if we want stationary mode deposition then we leave it here if we want deposition in rotation mode then we just switch it on that uh, you will have a better idea when you will see operation of the tools so now we are going to switch on the tool so uh, as i have already mentioned that chiller and compressor should be on so that is here on my right side that uh, we will switch it on eventually and then main power will be on that connection that supply is here so let us come to this first so here the first one is connected to the chiller and the second switch is for the compressor so let us switch on the chiller and compressor then this is the kind of prerequisite for the tool for operating the tool then we will go to the main power supply so here i think you can see two switches here one here the other one this as it is already we have written it for our purposes only that this is the system power and this is electron beam gun power ebg power as you can see here and here you can see this supply basically these two are different type of supplies this is just like one 230 volt normal connection as we use and this is to support a 5 kilo volt transformer so this has some better arrangement for this and one inbuilt ground line you can see the copper strip here this is going so this is one copper strip that is going as our thing this uh, anyway we will switch on this only when we are about to deposit something otherwise this should be off just to avoid the electrical hazard and this is the system power that we will be switching on now switching on the main power so now we are here as we have already discussed about this panel so we have to turn on this power uh, as we have switched it on you can see here it is asking for a reset and with that it is showing that water cooling is already on so as we have switched on the chiller so it is showing the water cooling thing but safety interlock it is not displaying because it asked for one reset button uh, reset then only it can sense that so let us go for a reset as we press the reset you can see the safety interlock is on water cooling is on and so we are good to go with the i mean uh, with our next process so here you can see this is the display see the status here system status is showing standby standby means only uh, i think if you can observe little closely you can uh, see that one fan sound is coming extra so that is basically to cool down the tool uh, whenever it is reset and other things are fine then it will switch on the fans so here you can see the system status has standby then chamber pressure so any vacuum tool is supposed to be kept under some vacuum always so that uh, the chamber will be under under some vacuum let's say minus 4 level minus whatever as you wish here as the pirani gauge is showing this much vacuum is still remaining in the chamber we didn't use it for a long time still it is like that and here we have two options like either start or vent start means it will start the pump and vent means we can open the chamber as we have to load our sample first so we have to vent open the chamber and then we can go for the next steps so let me press vent and then open the chamber and see what is there here you can see that after pressing vent the system status changed to 
chamber vent sequence and air admit valve open and you can see uh, chamber pressure is falling now and it will reach atmospheric pressure and if you closely uh, if you observe one extra air inlet sound you will get so this is from the display you can just check the things then let us wait for uh, when it, it is showing that it is under atmospheric pressure so we will try to open our chamber as the air, air inlet was on and uh, air I mean now the chamber is under atmospheric pressure so we are now allowed to open the chamber so let us open so here uh, this is the chamber inside I just I don't want to touch the things okay so here this part is basically for electron beam evaporation so here you, can, uh, you may not be able to see here here is the filament okay inside there is the filament so that filament will be heated and electron beam will be generated and pass through this so here we have one uh, open area like one square a rectangular open slot so from here the electron will come will avoid this and uh, fall here so in the theory classes i think you have already uh, you have taught that uh, one filament will generate the electron beam and using the magnet here it will be there will be a 270 degree deflection of the film and it will fall on the crucible so you can see it here now actually through this and with magnetic film it uh, magnetic field it will come and fall here here you can see this is the shutter so as long as this material is not properly melt or is not ready for evaporation still some amount of material will come out so this shutter will stop it and stop it from uh, getting deposited on the chuck so here is the chuck we will show the chuck uh, again when we will load the sample so and here you can see two pipes so basically this other chiller uh, these pipes are from the chiller unit and to the chiller unit one is inlet the other one is outlet this will be useful to cool down the filament and this whole module during deposition and even after deposition you can just uh, keep your chiller uh, or you can keep your chiller on so that water will flow through this and it will be cooled down otherwise this uh, this is a filament uh, made up of tungsten the tungsten filament will be very hot and you should not open the chamber and let on hot filament to be exposed to the air there is a fair chance that it will be oxidized or it will go bad also so uh, this is mainly about this module this here you can see this is a QCM or quartz crystal monitor this is here is the here it will be deposited at the front side here it will be deposited and the data we can get it from the DTM that we have already shown and discussed it is there and here you can see on uh, turret this is for movement of the turret or the crucibles the crucible will take it out and show before that so this will be useful for moving the things and here you can see right side this facility is there to generate plasma inside for cleaning purpose so we can generate plasma and clean the chamber inside that is one and back side you can see that is for thermal evaporation that we will discuss in the next module or the upcoming modules in one of those here this is basically our chamber before that uh, let us come closer to see the crucible so uh, to get access to these crucibles we have to open the shutter first so let us oh, remove the shutter i mean open the shutter so here you can see one of the materials as i already have mentioned that there are four crucibles so let us just check what are all four crucibles there so this one is uh, so here titanium is loaded you can see so how to take the crucibles out it is like you can take any tweezer like that and just slowly take it out okay and here you can see that uh, this is these are basically the like holders for the crucible okay this whole thing this turret can rotate or can move 
So before checking the other things, I just want to press it. Okay. So before any deposition, you should check whether enough material is there for the next deposition. That is something you should follow. You should not uh, end up depositing your crucible material on your sample. That is something you should check. So this is the first one. Titanium is loaded here. Then we already changed the thing. So you can check here. See, it is rotating. Moving to the next crucible. Okay. Here, I guess from the color you can understand that this is gold. I'm just taking out this and show. Okay. So gold is loaded here. You have to uh, just remember which crucible corresponds to which material or what type of material is loaded in which crucible. That you have to just keep a note before deposition so that you can uh, like you can deposit without in, uh, or without making any mistake. So here, if you see this crucible, this is aluminum. So one quick note for who are not used to use these tools. So you can see some extra material here, right? So who are uh, like not familiar that much to this tool, just a quick note for them. You should not uh, fill material more than 70% of any crucible, 70 to 80% max. If you fill more than that, it will spill. So when we started, this aluminum is like the cheapest material and for any, uh, for testing purpose, usually people use aluminum. So similar purpose, we used aluminum and uh, it just got spilled a little bit. These type of problems may occur because of either uh, like uh, a shifting of the beam or not proper placement of the beam or it may occur due to loading more amount of materials. So you should take care of this. This is aluminum. And as the next one we will show. You can see here, this is platinum. So as already discussed the other day, that whatever uh, patterns we have, we want titanium, platinum, basically platinum as the metal layer and titanium as the intermediate layer or the adhesion layer. So uh, we need to deposit this and we have already shown that titanium is also there. And that amount of material, what we want to deposit, that is also kind of okay. So we can now go for the deposition. That is our first thing. So as we will be depositing titanium first, so you should make sure that titanium will be there first and then the gold uh, or sorry, uh, titanium will be there first and then we will change during the process. Okay, so this is this uh, how turret controller is used and how this can be used. And here if you can just see, it's rotating. You can check it from here. If some problem happens here, then definitely the rotation will be stopped. So as I was telling that uh, it should be, I mean, in our case, it is crucible 3 for our tool. We kept titanium in crucible 3. So let it move, reach crucible 3, then we'll uh, stop this rotation or this will be stopped by itself basically. So see, now it, now it stopped. And we have titanium there. And we have checked all the crucibles and uh, the materials are fine. So after all this, before starting the things, we will close the, uh, close this shutter so that during heating up or pre-deposition heating, it should not start deposition directly on the wafer. Okay, so it's covered. So, okay, now let us discuss few general things and then we will uh, then we'll, uh, show how to load the sample on that. Till now, we have uh, actually shown the crucibles inside, I mean, with loaded materials. So this is how the crucible look like. This is the spare part, spare crucibles. So here, we can actually, if we want to load any new material, we cannot reuse any crucible. So we have to have some spare crucibles with us. Now crucible material can be different. 
like based on the material you are using it for crucible materials are different. Let us say if a material X will diffuse in material Y then X and Y materials together you cannot use either as crucible material or the material to deposit. Then material X will diffuse through the material Y and you will uh, end up wasting the material. So for using any or for before loading any material you should check whether the material diffuses through that and you will find there are uh, various online sources where you will find for a particular material let us say for gold or let us say for platinum what type of crucibles can be used. So that you have to check first procure the crucibles according to that and then you can load the materials and load it inside the chamber. Here two crucibles you can see here. So here the left hand this is molybdenum based crucible and right hand this one is graphite based crucible. In close up obviously you can see the difference like its smoothness how it is made and all this. So materials and even weight you can feel all this weight and you will understand the differences. Though from like a far look it may be of the similar color but this is not the same material you will understand these things. So here before loading any crucible obviously you should just wash it, uh, like uh, clean it once with solvents like acetone IP and then you can uh, put your uh, like um, put the material here and you can load it. So here if you see this is of 15 cc. So like that crucibles are available for different uh, volume. So how much volume of material or how much material you want to place inside your chamber that can be governed by what type of crucible or how much volume you are getting. These are 15 cc. So like that you can uh, have 15 cc, 25 cc, 40 cc. These are like uh, you can check any of the vendors um, sheet and you can understand what type of crucibles are available and what are the volume of the crucibles. So just a spare thing I just showed it to you and as you have already seen after one deposition how it looked like. So when deposition will be there or vacuum creation will be there that time I will show you the materials as well how the raw materials will look like. Okay. So now let us uh, take uh, this chart out and we will show how to load the things and we will uh, prefer to load these things in a solvent bench so we will go there and show you the things. So let us take it out. This is the chuck that uh, we will be using. This is 12 inch chuck. 12 inch chuck means 12 uh, chuck diameter is 12 inch. So like that different diameters you can use as per and different materials you can use whether it is SS or it will be some other material that is of your choice when you procure it. Let us load. So here as I kept here you can see that uh, after lithography what the sample was it is already here it was in a desiccator overnight after uh, after post uh, exposure back and um, development and after development we have performed hard back for 3 minutes after this is the sample where actually last day we showed you the patterns as well it was kind of visible that time. So we will load this sample on this chuck and place it inside. So for loading the sample there are multiple ways of loading the sample on the chuck. So you can see here the clamps. So if you have standard 4 inch wafer then it is very easy to load using these clamps. And here we have 3 inches though clamp can fit it but we usually prefer using captain tapes. So you can see this is the captain tape basically this is a polymide material. So the same polymide material that is here it is similar but uh, thickness will be different and this is commercially available. So uh, we prefer to use polymide tapes or captain tapes. So, uh, so here if we see So here we want to load it something like this. 
so here if we load it here you can see top material is also polyamide and here if we put some captain tape on this and there is a sticky material there is our gum so it can peel the whole layer so we have to fix this polyamide layer first on the back side and based on that we have to load the things so uh, we'll take some time to load it after that we'll come back again and show you uh, how it was how it is fixed on this so here you can see we already pasted this sample using this captain tapes usually two or three like this will be enough and we tried to avoid attaching tapes on the front surface so that this uh, thing will not come out or this polymide film will not will not peel that was our thing the these things are there now what is status of this sample we can just uh, just recall the things again so silicon wafer is kind of i mean is the supporting material then the substrate is this polyamide film that we have deposited uh, or we can we had prepared the film the other day on top of it we have done lithography so whatever patterns you are seeing these are basically uh, photoresist patterns so there is no metal as of now we are going now to deposit the metals let us load this in our chamber so whenever you leave the tool or the chamber, uh, chamber for some time better you close it all the time because the more time you will keep it open it will uh, accumulate more uh, amount of contamination inside from this air only and it will take more time to evacuate so that's why i just close the chamber and went there for loading here let us open the chamber so this shaft is there to uh, hold the chuck we will load it like this this is fixed now this shaft can rotate so that the, this whole thing this chuck will be rotated so here we will show you today first the stationary deposition and then deposition in rotation in same vacuum level only so first we will just uh, let us just as i told already that i will be showing stationary so for stationary deposition always it should be exactly above that so that deposition will be maximum if it is in rotation then you don't have to worry because then whole chuck will be rotated and in rotation always uniformity is better so we prefer uh, deposition in rotation always so you have to remember that when you are optimizing any tool but in other case if you want some or if your deposits if you want to deposit some material like gold or platinum some uh, precious material then you can prefer stationary mode depending on your sample size and if there is only one way for something like that and you don't want to uh, waste material all over the chuck only if you want to deposit here then you can go for it that is your choice you have to optimize your recipe in that way but uh, we will deposit in rotation only okay so here is the first thing and as i have already mentioned about this hole like rectangular hole how this will come through that and it will be deposited here is the cover here is that and we have our substrate here so now we are good to go and you just check by mistake you should not keep any loose object inside like let's say like tweezer let's say like one of the screws you just check that and as there is nothing just let us close the chamber and then we will go to the process so let us close the chamber this is done now here is our tool so now let us see what is that tool condition if you see here uh, safety interlock is off as i already mentioned that safety interlock corresponds to the doors like whether all the doors are closed and whether there is some amount of vacuum there in the chamber as it is under atmospheric pressure so uh, by default the safety interlock is off now uh, i'd request to focus this area like uh, this and this so that we will just show what is the status 
So uh, as a closer look, you can see that, see, one more thing here, in most of the tools, whatever is allowed, that will be either in glowing condition or this or some color difference will be there, like what are all allowed things and what are all not allowed. So here, similarly, we can see that we can go for start or we can go for vent. Vent already we have tried, vent is for venting the chamber and open the chamber. Now here is the start. So start, it will start the pumps basically and so let us try that. Here you can see that chamber pressure uh, by Pidani gauge measured by using Pidani is at atmospheric pressure. Let us start. As we pressed, see, so first it start the backing pump. So after this backing pump, let us see and uh, after this backing pump, it will start turbomolecular pump and then see after backing pump started, it, sta it started backing process. So backing process is, uh, there are two lines basically that you can see from here, system view and mimic diagram. So here you can see this is the rotary pump, this is acting as a backing pump now. How? See here there are two lines, one is roughing line, one is backing line. Backing line is through this. So here as you can see, this is our chamber. So through that we are getting, we are taking the connection here. So backing valve is open as it is glowing as I already told. A backing valve is open and roughing valve is closed. So through this line we are creating the vacuum now. Why backing line? Because before starting this thermomolecular pump, it want to make some sort of vacuum, okay? So the, here is the reason. So this P1, P3, P2, these are the gauges. So P1 is the Pirani gauge, you, uh, P2 is also another Pirani gauge and this is P3 is penning gauge. What is Pirani gauge and penning gauge? These are already covered in theory session. We will discuss it again, but before that, so as you can see here, turbo pump is on, it is glowing. So let us go back to the system control and see what is the case. See, it is showing turbo acceleration. So as turbo pump was off, it was having some uh, zero uh, RPM as a rotation. So here it will increase to 13,000 RPM or its rated speed. That will take some time. So this is the, st uh, so that is why we are seeing system status as turbo acceleration it will be turbo ready. So when uh, turbo pump will be ready, we can go for vacuum cycles. So let us wait for some time, as long as turbo acceleration is going on. So now as we can see after waiting for some time, uh, turbo pump ready. So now we have these many options like stop, we can stop the tool. So uh, stop means it will basically decelerate the turbo pump and, uh, and it will prepare the tool shutdown step. Cycle is like vacuum cycle, we can vent at any moment till now and process. So we can start deposition, but as we know that deposition is supposed to be at 10 power minus 6 millibar pressure or that much of vacuum, so we cannot go for process now. So we have to go for vacuum cycle and vacuum cycle is automated here that we will see here how it works. As turbo pump is ready, let us press cycle and then explain the things further. Cycle. So first it will start with cycle sequence roughing. So first roughing cycle will start. That we can see here. Let us go to that diagram. Okay. So here you can see now backing valve is off. So one second, yeah. Now backing valve is off. So this backing line is completely detached. So uh, this is not creating vacuum through this line. It is, uh, and see here, wrapping valve is on. So it is creating vacuum from this chamber to this line. And by this time you could probably notice that this safety interlock is on. So this requires at least 10 power 1 millibar pressure. So it should be two, uh, two times, I mean, uh, al almost like 100 times less than the environment pressure, like uh, atmospheric pressure, then only this environment is little safer for the user to uh, go for 
deposition or other things. So that is ensured by this. Here you can see only P1 and P2 is active. So P2 is here. This is giving almost like P1 gets connected near to this line, and the other one is here in between roughing and backing line, almost nearby this roughing pump. These two are giving the values now. So you can see here some volt is coming. So that much voltage that is that uh, sensed voltage. So that voltage is converted to pressure, and from there we are getting this value, this some millibar. So here you can see safety interlock is on. Uh, this is also on. This is ready basically, and this is also on. And now let us go to system control because we can do everything from there only. So we'll be there now. So uh, okay. Here, if you can see, it is uh, upper minus one. We will wait till it uh, goes to the high vacuum uh, or high vacuum valve opens, and it goes for fine pumping through. I mean, or uh, using turbo molecular pump through the backing line. Till that much, we'll uh, wait. We'll show in video. After that, we'll again come back when it will reach minus six pressure. So let us wait for that much time, like few minutes maybe. It will come. So here you can see it is going down. It's minus two now. So we'll wait for some more time. It will start fine pumping. Till now it is pumping through the. Uh, now it started through the backing line. We can show it. See, now this uh, high vacuum valve. This is on. So it is. Through this backing line now, and this roughing line is closed. Okay, so and this uh, P3 that the pinning line is activated now. Now we will wait till we can see that uh, fine pumping starts. Okay, but this will be the configuration uh, for that uh, next. Let's say it will take one hour or one and a half hours. So this will be the configuration for that through this uh, pumping through this line. And it is already reached minus four. So go to system control and see minus four to the M uh, gauge. And here you can see system status as fine pumping. This will continue till minus six range. Let it go there as it is. And uh, let us come or uh, let us uh, focus on little bit details about the gauges also. So gauges means there are usually two types of gauges that we are using for these vacuum tools. So one is Pirani gauge, another one is Penning gauge. So Pirani gauge is something that is good for measuring higher pressures. So like a higher pressure means from atmospheric pressure to e power minus three or uh, e power minus three or e power minus four millibar. That much it can measure. And Penning gauge is good for measuring from e power minus two. To e power minus six or seven, also it can measure e power minus seven millibar pressure. So as for this tool, we will be uh, we have this atmospheric pressure range as well as uh, when it will be under vacuum, we need to measure e power minus six or e power minus six uh, seven millibar range. So we have both the things. Uh, however, we cannot show you the Pirani gauges and Penning gauges. As of now, because then we have to actually open this whole thing, so we don't <laughs> want to open the setup as of now. So here, these are the two types of gauges. As you can see here, already M or the penning gauge took over the things, as it was minus four that time, and still this time it is minus four millibar range. So let us wait till it reaches e power minus six pressure, or actually we prefer. Three per minus six pressure or four per minus six pressure before uh, starting our process.